through my emotions and the arch. How do these terms relate to each other? I will try to say something about this through the lens of the terror attacks on the 22nd of July in Oslo and that with Daya, and how this traumatic event is remembered in three public artworks. Let me first briefly introduce the memorials which we will talk about this morning. Um, so you will have some images in your head as we go along. Okay, so the first one is Memory Room by Jonas Dahlberg. Dahlberg's memorial is really in several parts, but here I will focus on the most controversial and Memory Wound is the, you could say, official presentation of the presentation of the dramatic event of 22nd of July. It won the competition arranged by KURU, the state's organ for public arts, and it is, I have to say, aesthetically striking and very strong. It is structured as a cut in Söderbroten, as you can see here, a small headline protruding from the mainland into Tyrifjorden, not far from Utøya, where Anders Bering Breivik launched his attack. The cut tells a story about an event so violent that it is impossible to fathom. We have no language for making sense of something like this, a guy killing 69 young people. It is even against nature. Around the cut, the site directs the movement of its visitors. It's another image of the whole thing. Around the cut, the site directs the movement of its visitors. A pathway leads down to a platform where the visitors can contemplate the names of the deceased, engraved in stone on the other side of a small channel. There are no bridges. So the loved ones are gone forever, impossible to reach, the memorial tells us, as if we didn't know this already. And the fundamental structure of the whole work, the whole memorial, is about this unrepeatable loss. It reenacts it, if you will, again and again. It is this sense of loss that will physically activate the site, as Jonas Dahlberg himself said in his presentation of the project. Of course, we don't have to follow the steps laid out for us, but this is the narrative embedded in the memorial. The work has been and is controversial, especially because the neighbors feel it will only remind them of the horrors of what happened that day in an un unnecessary, violent and imposing manner. Not so difficult to understand, I think. Some of them have people running from the killer out to the cold sea, risking their own lives. Yes, why should they be reminded of this horrible event every day? So there's a lot of problems with this work, and I will get back to some of them shortly. The second memorial I would like to show you is Relocating the Past by Ahmad Gusan. This memorial is radically different since it is, in fact, a ready-made. The newspaper display cases outside the offices of the Norwegian tabloid Vege in Akersgata, just opposite the government building where the bomb went off, was destroyed by the blast, but the frame was intact and the glass didn't fall out. It became this kind of nuanced, fractured imprint of the, the explosion itself. Almost like a photograph, the memorial was exposed by the terror event and is still in touch with it, more so than any of the other memorials. Physically in touch. It's a snapshot, you might say, of the, of the event. Several images here of that memorial. And the third memorial I'm going to talk about is the clearing on the actual island Utøya, made by the architects 3RW 
in collaboration with some of the survivors and the youth wing of the Norwegian Labour Party, which was the political group attacked by Anders Bering Bavik. Um, the memorial consists of a metal ring, as you can see, hung from the trees. And it is a withdrawn spot, a place to go by yourself, rather than a symbol of what happened. In the ring, the names of the deceased are visible, but you are not removed from them. You can walk around them, enter the ring, sit down, watch it from all sides. The story told is quite different and more flexible, as you can see. Um, quite different from the strongly directed narrative of memory wound and the almost objective registration of the event in relocating the past. Um, yeah. Okay. All three memorials tell a story about what happened the 22nd of July, 2011. But there are some interests involved in each memorial, and it is very important, imperative to know what kind of interests. I think we can talk about at least four types of interests. One, the interest of the people immediately struck by the traumatic event, survivors, families of the deceased, and witnesses. What I imagine is important for them is healing and looking towards the future. The point is, of course, not to forget, but also to invent forms of rem remembering which have just as much room for imagining the future as it has for remembering the past. This interest group is connected with decency and democratic virtues, relating to others respectfully and to take their feelings seriously, which leads me to the other interest group, which is civil society. Civil society has, I would argue, an interest in respectful and transparent way of rem remembering the event based on solidarity and empathy. A way, of handling the, uh, a way of handling what happened that does not cover up the event, to be sure, but doesn't want to insist on the violence or loss either. Civil society has no interest in prolonging the pain or insisting on the loss, at least if the space for imagining, imagining the future is so slim or left out. The clearing is closest to those struck by the event and the virtues of society, civil society. And then we have another interest group which differs from the others, and that is the states or people in powerful positions like the government or big art organizations. Their interest, I would argue, is in, it seems, making a symbol out of the event and something permanent for things to come, times to come, future generations. They are interested in taking part in history through striking monuments visible from a long distance in time. Memory wound is, of course, the closest ally for these kinds of interests. I would actually also like to add a fourth almost <coughs> experimental category which can contain members from all the other interest groups. And this group has, I argue, an interest in truth. They have an interest in not concealing what happened, not making a symbol uh, of what happened, um, but understanding what happened um, in connection with truth. As a part of this way of thinking, the site itself, as a part of this way of thinking, the site itself might be imagined to be a party, because there is an inherent value, I would say, in keeping um, physical damage done to a site intact, because the destruction, a fragment of the ruin, is connected with truth, the physical facts of the terror attack. Relocating the past is has to do with an interest in truth. But the stories are also instructions, a blueprint for how we should view the event retrospectively, how we should handle it. Different values are stressed, which, when taken into account, 
gives us a sense of a much broader complex of ideas about the past and how we should relate to the, uh, relate to the past events, but also to ourselves and to each other generally. So there are several interests involved in all three memorials, which also express values about how we should be as human beings. They are symptoms of what is important for society. So let me then say a few words about memory wound and why it troubles me from this perspective. So Dahlberg's work is dislodged from everyday solidarity and the importance of conservation and healing, which ideally characterizes civil society. Memory wound rises above the reality of suffering by transforming the traumatic event into an epic symbol, something touching in its unbelievable horror because of its majestic uh, aesthetic power. It is even, I would argue, sublime in its grand destruction of nature. Just think of the precise conceptual gesture, rationally cutting open the regular forms of the forest. At the same time, it freezes the feeling of loss, fetishizing it almost, by separating the spectators from the names on the surface on the other side of the small channel, by reenacting it again and again through the scripted spaces which makes up the sign of the memorial. This memorial tells a story which leaves very little room for the future and has little room for other stories than its own. We are led through a channel and if you follow the instructions, we are confronted with a model of thinking and reflection a way of dealing with loss and death and terror based on the perpetual insistence on loss, the fact that we cannot reach the other side. The combination of aesthetic refinement or symbolic precision becomes, I think, heartless in its exclusion of healing and its denial of a space for the future, which is, despite the loss and violence still, ahead of the survivors and society as a whole. And this mode of storytelling belongs to power and it belongs to art, the autonomy of art, not the survivors, because, as I said, the monument fetishizes the emotional bonds broken. In a letter published in Offenposten, recently, a few days ago, we could read um, some reflections on memory run by a lot of public plays in the art world, which actually recommended to realize it in its proposed form. And one of the, one of the things we could read there was, quote, Jonas Dahl, Barik forces us to look inward, away from the island so we can embrace the great sorrow we have inside us." End quote. Okay, but who are these we? And who defines this we they talk about? This is an important question. And if we read the letter carefully, there is, I think, little doubt that the people defining the we, at least in this text, should be are the directors, curators, and art historians signing it. There you can find everybody from the Norwegian professor in art history, Ina Blom, to people like Alfredo Jar. It's certainly an interesting case study because the pathos of the text echoes the pathos of the, of the memorial itself. Here we have very little room, at least not within the space of the text, for the survivors. We have very little room for the eyes, the individuals, which are not able to, quote, embrace the great sorrow inside through this memorial. 
The combination of aesthetic strength and the memory of trauma is, of course, a touchy issue. But we should not avoid going into this minefield, because if we don't, the arguments are, by default, left to the ones in power. And if they have the last say, it is also their values which will prevail. Now, let us have a final look at relocating the past and the queering as well. None of these memorials have the grandeur, the aesthetic force and the power of memory wound. The narrative of the scripted space laid down in them does not direct our movement around the memorials or use them as memory wound does. They actually leave us open a space for civil society, for interpretation, for inter inventing your own stories, and does not try to impose on us an epic narrative of violence and loss. Go Science Memorial, relocating the past, performs the role of the witness in the form of the fragment of the event itself and is objective in a sense, without any overpowering pathos, almost scientific in its austere, austere exposure of the reality of the past so many years after it happened. The clarity of the work has room for both a we and several eyes and doesn't instruct us in what stories to tell. And which is interesting, I think, can be thought of as, in a sense, the city remembering itself by not trying to apply architectural makeup or remove the historical signs of damage. <coughs> the, the, la the last memorial, the clearing, is the weakest one in aesthetic terms, but the strongest one in emotional terms, <coughs> democratic terms. It is not about history with the big age. It is not about some enormous trauma. It is about silence. It's about privacy and respectfulness, which are necessary for democracy and for the survivors to move on. The clearing is not preoccupied by uh, symbolic strength, by amazing aesthetic gestures of sublime violence, but taking care of people by offering them a retreat, a place for solace where they don't have to be confronted with loss again and again, but are free to tell stories of their own. Maybe even stories about something else entirely than the traumatic July 22nd. This is the most discreet one, and it's not really a representation at all, but resembles a sanctuary, a place to go to think about the deceased, yes, not unlike the practice of going to a grave and sit there to mourn and contemplate the fate of our ancestors, as we all know. And everybody does that. It's a strongly, strongly, strongly ritualized space, closer to a shrine or a holy site than a piece of art. It even comes close to religious spaces, places of worship, humility and hope, where the inner experience is more important than the external prop. It's a place for protecting the fragile and vulnerable lives of the survivors and the witnesses. But, and this is, a, this is important, also a demonstration that there are some virtues which are of more value than powerful works of art, like solidarity, empathy, and respect. The clearing is not so much about what happened, really, as about the void it has left us with and what that should be filled with. It is about the future, not about the past. And as we all know, there can, as we all know, there can be no future if you don't work on the past haunting us by placing it in a story which also includes the future. We should remember, yes, but not by insisting on pain, but on inventing stories that transcends pain and give new meaning to our lives. These stories cannot be told for us by power players in the art world or the state, 
or even critics perhaps. It doesn't matter how many professionals that tell us that their stories is the most, most important one. You have to tell the story yourself. And at the very end, in this sense, we could also invent other we's than the letter you could read in Often Posten a few days ago. Other we's. Country we's, which are more interested in solidarity and empathy, in truth even, than the power of art or the symbolism made for history with a big H. Country we's that wants to take care of people and lives rather than art and history. This talk points in the direction of another we in this sense. But that's another story. Thank you. <laughs>